Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you're at, ladies and gents. I am Kura Isagami, your resident tinkerer and meta rotter, and this is the MetaRot News Network, bringing you all the latest developments and happenings with our favorite pet fighting robot series. Now, this week it looks to be another Ladies' Day out, much like we did similarly to Valentine's Day, but this week, instead of going to the mall for chocolates and Valentine's, we are going instead taking a field trip to the battlefield, uh, sporting a lot of motifs of, le of the legendary uh, of the legendary theme and concept of the Lady Warrior types known as Valkyries, uh, hence the namesake for this week's episode as well, Flight of the Valkyries. With that being said, as you see here, we do see one brand new model that was announced as a debut for this week, in addition to another returnee that a lot of OG fans that played the GBA game uh, will know very, very well. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into what they did announce for this week, as we did actually get a number of teasers uh, for future upcoming content, no less. Starting up, starting up with the gotcha banners we have for this week, uh, of course, is the brand new model VAL04 Brunhild with a kit of Gatling, Charge Drain, Guard 500, Float Legs, and the Holy Grace Leg ability. Followed behind her, we also have the original and OG Valkyrie type VAL0 Pretty Prime with a kit of Mirror Guard, Freeze, Basic Guard, Biped Legs, and the Dead or Alive Leg ability. And then last but not least, kind of sticking out here for no real reason in particular aside from keeping things clean, is the maid type, MID0 Brightness, with a kit of Trap Clear, Double Stat Cleanse, Biped Legs, and the Trap Buster Leg ability. Now, of course, with this week, Brunhill is going to be the, absolutely the big MVP uh, for anyone that maybe has uh, gotten a hold of Kaiser Beetle and or Luminous Stag in the previous weeks. And on a note of those two, they will be sticking around for one more week. So if you decide that Valkyries aren't quite your thing, uh, you still have one more week to try to shoot for, for Kaiser Beetle or Luminous Stag, as both are absolutely worth the pull if you do have the resources for them. Um, but in terms of what we have this week, a lot of mixed defender or ailment types or even ailment cleanser types if we want to include uh, brightness in there. So lots of mixed parts to choose from. Thankfully, since none of them are capable of meta change, that will mean pulling at least something from them in the gacha banners will be just a little bit easier, I suppose, than it was last week, getting not one but two meta change bots. And I'm sure that bled a lot of people dry uh, when it came to their ruby resources. I know for a fact I was bled dry pretty hard. Um, going for Luminous Stag when, I, when he went live earlier this week. But, in addition to this, we do also have for the Fierce Battles this week, um, APL01 Top Gunner, who is a returnee from Metarock Girls Mission, uh, similarly to uh, Brunhild, who's making her debut this week. Uh, and she's got a kit of Radar Sight, Double Missile, Flight Legs, and the Aim Leg ability. In addition, we also have GBB01 Slapbeat, the basis type, who also debuted back in the days of Metarot Girls Mission on the 3DS, with a kit of Shoot Boost, Beam, Thunder Shot, Flight Legs, and the Radiator Leg ability. And then last but not least, another OG that a lot of fans of the, of the series, the anime, and the games will know very well, um, FSL01 Fancy Roll, with a kit of Virus, Hammer, Napalm, Flight Legs, and the Mascot Leg ability. So a lot of mixed fires ultimately this week with a lot of um, mixed compatibility between them all in terms of what's considered great and what's considered not so great or skippable this week. So it was kind of tricky to actually mark... Uh, someone as an MVP of the week in terms of the fierce battles since all of them can offer something potentially decent in one way or the other But if I did have to give that MVP of the week to somebody I would have to give it to fancy roll given that virus is a very versatile part that you can use just about anywhere and it's and it still is it capable of um, still nailing the opponent with an ailment if they are, say, blocked from, say, uh, the super armor like ability, where which would basically bottleneck someone like Slap, uh, slap Beat with Thundershot in particular. So Fancy Roll definitely is the one to shoot for this week if you have nothing in particular to do and just need to farm. Um, Top Gunner and Slap Beat I'd say are also worth picking up just for the sake of having them, um, but I wouldn't necessarily prioritize them too heavily um, in comparison to Fancy Roll, who's a little better balanced overall. Now, you're probably wondering why on earth would a maid type be kind of sitting in the mix with a whole bunch of Valkyries and combat types this week? Um, and I'm pretty sure you probably have a hint as to why, because it would, given history of sticking one kind of out like a sore thumb in terms of previous weeks and what that and what they offered. And that's because Brightness is getting a new skin added to the convenience store this week. Um, Crimson Blonde Brightness, or what they just call another type in this case, um, it's simply, simply exchanging her uh, black-gray uh, made outfit for a red one and going blonde instead. 
So definitely a very nice cosmetic appearance and a little bit of a change. Not necessarily anything that'll add any kind of major aesthetic difference, aside from maybe being a little more friendly to color, uh, given that the black doesn't really color all that well with the color filters and the color chips uh, without some really serious modifications to it. So I'd say this one's kind of an up in the air. Um, Stack Cleanse, of course, is something you will use everywhere and anywhere because it's so versatile. But I'd say, like, like I said, the skin is honestly kind of an optional thing, as it is with any of them. Um, so I'd say purchase it at your own per, 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 uh, purchase it at your own preference, um, or perhaps save this week for another skin that may come down the line, which I am highly, highly expecting, uh, naturally, as the weeks do progress forward. We also did get another heads up that we are getting more art images added to the image gotcha. Uh, for those who were, pro who were out of the loop or perhaps did not notice this extra pool that was added, uh, we do have access to a new currency, uh, like, a, like a little uh, rainbow coin kind of item that you can pick up and buy in the convenience store occasionally. And these are what you use for an image gotcha, which basically is like an image library um, of official art from MetaRots, org meta rotters in the uh, from past games or even new games with, the, with modern art. Um, so definitely, I wouldn't necessarily say prioritizing this is going to be a huge thing because there is no easily consistent way to get the token. But it is simply worth noting at the very least that we will be getting more art for it. So say, uh, save these tokens, burst them all at once, or use them all up when you get a chance, when you, when you, as soon as you get them. It's all up to your personal preference, really. Now, they did also announce another really big piece of news, um, and that is the fact that we are getting a brand new series type Metarot, uh, with a detective type motif. Uh, these particular models that they highlighted here for, are the detective leader, um, an agent type, and of course a small dog slash mascot type. Um, no information whatsoever has been given in terms of what their names are or what their kits are or even what they may be doing. Um, all they really told us this week is that they exist. Um, so I'm really looking, I really am excited to see what more information come for these three in particular. In addition to, of course, we are still missing and waiting uh, news and updates in regarding the uh, Ori Meta contest for the Nine-Tailed Fox and the Ouroboros types, uh, which I believe are both now officially closed, if I recall correctly, if, the Ouro if not the Ouroboros contest has just a little bit longer to go before that one does close. My biggest suspicion is that we probably will be seeing these three make official introductions in a new story content, so I do suspect we may see another story arc sometime in the near future that will highlight these three in particular, or at least allow them to cameo as a way to segue into an official introduction um, into the series. So definitely more information on that coming soon as more information does release. But aside from all this, we are still continually looking forward, uh, looking for translators and cleaners and coders on the community front uh, for the MetaRot 3 and the MetaRot Reloaded manga translation projects. There is a lot of code to clean and a lot of chapters that need translated, and we would absolutely love nothing more than to get it done. But unfortunately, we are missing the manpower to do so. So if you have any knowledge in coding, cleaning, or Japanese with some time on your hands, you're more than welcome to reach out to me um, or even join our Discord in the link provided and in the comments below, and we can definitely get you up to speed and in, uh, in touch with the right people to get you, uh, kind of fill you in on what has been done and what still needs finished up to this point. We would absolutely love to get started on other projects such as MetaRot 4, MetaRot 5, and Navi. Um, Navi in particular, as I've mentioned in previous episodes, is a very highly requested project, um, but again, we just lack the labor and the manpower to do so. So if you do have some time on your hands with some skills, we would love to see those uh, seen into a, made into a reality, and we'd love to have you a part of that project to do so. Uh, for the for the art highlight this week, uh, mostly just a lot of uh, pics that I found in fairly recent. Uh, first of which is from a Twitter user named Auxilla V. Very creative little uh, play on word there, by the way. If you are watching this, with a very cute and wonderful piece of of everyone's favorite uh, blazer schoolgirl type blazer mate, uh, with what she offers. She is definitely a very popular subject matter when it comes to a lot of Metarot fan art, especially of the female bot variety. So it's not really hard to see a lot of art of her. But of course, for this uh, for sake of this, it is always great to highlight another artist, especially one within the Metarock community, uh, just so we can get some more note, uh, more, um, uh, mo mo some more highlights to what they to what they do in their art, so they can get more. So, so they can get more highlighted in the community. The other piece here, of course, is by Madama Yusa Usaki. I have highlighted them in the past with a piece of Kaiser Beetle. Um, of course, just to kind of highlight that we have had them this week. 
uh, in the uh, last week and this week coming before the banners do close. It is always nice to see more models officially become launched and debut into the game to join the rest of the family. Uh, Kaiser Beetle certainly is no exception. Now, of my personal opinion, we, with, the, with the launch of Kaiser Beetle and Luminous Stag, we are now only missing one more set of KBT and KWG pairing, and that is, of course, Pupa Beetle and Pupa Stag, from, also from Metarot Navi. Will they launch? I highly suspect they will eventually. I'm just not 100% sure how or when, but I would love to see that day when it happens. Um, again, definitely do follow both of these artists if you'd like to see more Metarot in your feed and give them more um, exposure to high, uh, more of a community for what they do truly deserve. But aside from all this, I believe that covers just about everything in this week's episode. Um, again, not a whole lot really that was highlighted this week aside from the launch of uh, Brunhild and prim primarily as the big highlight point. And of course, the detective types, which we will see a lot of um, more information on in, the, in future episodes, I'm sure as the weeks do progress. But if you'd like to know more, you can follow us below um, on Facebook. You can follow us at the Metabot, uh, Metabot, Metarot News Network page or the Metabots Forever communities on Facebook. You can also join us on Discord in the link provided and in the comments below if you'd like to know more and keep a closer ear to the ground on anything related to the series. That includes any merch that comes out, um, any tips or tricks with Metarot S, much like you see on my weekly episodes, or perhaps just want to connect with other fellow Metarotters to uh, connect and join the community for uh, just as a simple answer. You can also follow me on Twitter personally at Isagami Kura if you'd like to, and you can also feel free to message me for any questions, comments, feedback, or suggestions. Uh, my DMs are always open. I leave them open for a reason. So don't be a stranger. Feel free to reach out if you have anything you'd like to talk about, and I'm more than happy to respond when I can so we, and we can get a conversation going um, or even talk about anything that you might want to consider as an addition to my weekly episodes or even something on the channel as a whole. Do also give these follow these fine folks a follow in addition. Uh, Twitter user Miso Jineki, who is a, another a Japanese streamer who posts Metarot content every so often. Uh, very nice art, very wonderful model, by the way. Uh, and also follow Ribera V also on Twitter, who is a relatively up and coming VTuber as well. Um, very good, a fairly decent friend of mine. Very good content. Uh, very bubbly, very open personality as well. So both of these, you will never go wrong with giving a follow to see more of in your Twitter feeds as their content does release and they do make more updates to what they do decide to launch. But aside from all this, I believe that covers just about everything for this week's episode. So thanks again for stopping by, folks. It's always happy to have you in for a visit. Until next time, this is your host, Kura Isagami of the Metarot News Network, signing out.